We're at 5.30, everyone. One of the most notorious serial killers in American history, Ted Bundy, was executed 30 years ago today. You may recall he was tried and convicted for the 1978 murder of a 12-year-old Florida girl, Kimberly Leach. It was for that killing that Bundy was executed all those years ago, but that's just one of dozens of murders attributed to Bundy, whose true number of victims really is still in question. By the time he stood trial, Bundy had already been sentenced to death twice for the 1978 killings of two Florida State University students. His execution widely actually celebrated with more than 200 people waiting outside the penitentiary. Now, one of those people, our own Don Dare, who actually worked down there at the time for the CBS station in Miami. Don, I imagine 30 years later, this bringing back a lot of emotions. It does. You know, one of these events you never forget. Mm -hmm. and, and we went from Miami, flew up to Jacksonville, and this is in Rayford, Florida, which is where the Florida State Prison is. It's just southeast of Jacksonville. I remember it as a day and night of weeping, cheering, and it just unbelievable information that was going on. We had in one corner people f clanging frying pans, mm -hmm. fry him, fry him, fry him, and in another area were people with candles and crying to save his life. Had you covered any executions at this point in your career? No, I had not. But I had covered Bundy back in 1979. Uh, after he was accused of killing two co-eds up in Tallahassee. They moved that trial down from Tallahassee to Miami, and I covered one of the hearings. And the strange thing about Bundy is that he was handsome. Yet yeah, charming is how a lot of people described yeah. him. And very intelligent. He acted as his own attorney. And he, what, I think it's something he, he's, he attributed to over 100 deaths. Yeah, at this point, they're still saying that number's in mm -hmm. question, but, but more than he was tried for. Right. Uh, so many people have so many questions still about that. After the execution, it, we were there at, at 7 o'clock in the morning. It happened at 7.15. Mm -hmm. I was doing live shots for the CBS station down in Miami, and I had one of these in my ear. Mm -hmm. This is with a little IFB, and I could hear the producer down in Miami, and we didn't know. We were about half a mile away from uh, Section Q, I believe, that the, the, the part of it was, the execution chamber. So we didn't know around 7.15 what had happened. She gets the flash on the AP wire and says in my ear, he's dead. And I said back, he's dead. So I knew then I had 90 seconds to talk about his death. And we had video of these people uh, Banging, the, mm -hmm. banging these uh, frying pans and other people who were, had the candles praying. Afterwards, very few people knew Dr. James Dobson. I was just going to ask you about so him. He's a psychologist. Dr. James mm -hmm. Dobson was very well known in 1989. Focus on the family, and my wife and I had seen some in our Sunday school classes, some of the presentations that he made on film. He actually had an interview with Ted Bundy the day before, at which time Bundy confessed and said that it was pornography that led me to, to the spree of crime. And uh, Dr. Dobson taped, uh, f filmed part of that interview with him, and I think it's still, you can still see that at those interviews. Hey, so w we know that today, and we talked about it, I believe, on GMT this morning, a new exhibit opened up at the Alcatraz mm. Museum, again, some 30 years later. How did covering this impact you personally and your career? Did it change the way you looked at things moving forward? It changed the way I looked at uh, the death penalty, yeah, it sure did. Uh, you know, part of the thing that Dr. Dobson says is that uh, Bundy confessed his sins and he expressed his belief in Christ. And uh, I had a hard time with that. How can someone who killed so many people now be free of his sins? And, and it was tough for me to reconcile that. that that religious faith. Is this exhibit that I was talking about something that you, as someone who covered and lived through this, would want to go see? No. Too no, difficult. But I'm sure a lot of people will out of curiosity. Yep. I don't care to see it. I, I've seen some pictures that Gabrielle's going to have a story in, in a mm -hmm. little bit about the exhibit, but no, I don't care to see it. All right, Don, we appreciate you sharing your insight. You have such a, such a wide, varied career. We can all learn a lot from you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone, as we said, that new exhibit is opening up at the Alcatraz East Museum on this 30-year milestone. That is in Pigeon Forge. Coming up again at 6 o'clock, as we just told you, we're going to take a look at the memorabilia, some of the evidence in that case, remembering Ted Bundy and this notorious crime all these years later.